guys welcome to cinematography simplified so in this series i try and simplify um, techniques that you can use to make your films more cinematic so in this video today we are specifically going to look at angles and perception how you can use angles to control your audience perception so how you can use angles to control your viewers perception of the scene or the situation playing out in your film right the reason why controlling your audience's um perception is important is so that way you can make them interpret a scene how you want them to interpret a scene so like the number six can also be a number nine depending on what your point of view is if let's say it's laid out this way somebody from that side of the of the spectrum is going to look at it and um say this is a number nine but somebody from this side is going to say oh that's a number six it all depends on perspective so that's why perspective and camera angle plays a huge role in filmmaking and how you can tell your story so depending on what you choose to show the audience on what angle you choose to, to show them the scene from is how they're going to perceive the action taking place in the film so that's why camera angle is very important because it controls your viewers perception of the scene okay so that's why camera angle is very very important and the angles you choose to use play a huge role in how your audience perceive the action taking place okay so let's take it back a little bit right what is film right what is a film that's the question so the answer is a film is just a story that's what a film is it's a story it's a story of this and that you know there's all these films that all tell different stories so when you look at the basics like what a film is the basic is just a film is a story every movie is a story or an adventure or whatever it depends on the genre but every movie every film is a story so you as the filmmaker that's where angles and perception come into place you try and tell the story in a way that the audience is going to interpret it the way that you the filmmaker want the audience to interpret that story to wrap that up is like you know the way you choose to tell your story like the perception you choose is how the audience is going to have a certain expectation depending on um, what they're looking at so if this is going on your audience expect this to go on later that's why movies whereby like everybody expects the hero later on in the movie to win right so the way you lay out your film kind of like builds a certain expectation in your viewers mind like okay so this guy is working out so you show like let's say for example like rocky right the movie rocky they show Sylvester Stallone, like, you know, all the montages of him working out. Like, you know, he's lifting weights, he's going to the gym every day, back to back, back to back, back to back. And they say a year later. So you expect that that this character is now going to be, maybe have a six pack, is going to, if he was fat, is going to get skinny. So whatever, you know, the filmmaker is showing you, it's building an expectation in your mind subconsciously without you ever knowing it so that's why films are you know it's a gift and a curse that's why some people can use films to kind of like um enforce a belief or an idea in the viewer's mind maybe that might be their intention and so the way they choose to tell the story can play a huge role if they succeed or not that's why some movies, some films are just like, are called propaganda um, films because they try and kind of like, um, you know, enforce a certain idea into the viewers um, who are watching, right? Into the viewer's perception or perspective. For example, it's like um, documentaries about like global warming or like, um, let's say, um, about Democrats and Republicans and, you know, all these um, 
films and documentaries about certain topics. Some of these documentaries, um, the filmmakers, uh, you know, you, you need to kind of be careful because the intentions of the filmmaker might be to install a certain belief into you know your mind subconsciously without you even knowing it depending on how they choose to show you these things that they're showing you right and how they choose to tell the story because that's all a filmmaker um that's the that's the importance of a filmmaker a filmmaker needs to make you see things the way they want you to see things that's why you need to be careful when you're watching some of these movies because um you can start watching a movie and leave with a certain perception or a certain belief in your mind without you even like realizing that's what the filmmaker was trying to do that's why movies are powerful that's why films are powerful because um as a filmmaker you can kind of like tell a story and um how you choose to you know tell the story is how um you know it's very important that's why certain movies certain scary movies really like um make you feel uncomfortable while watching because of the angles the filmmakers decide to use uh you know it can be really scary depending on how they kind of go about using those angles and using perception you know what i mean so that's the power of filmmaking guys so be careful with that that's the gift and the curse. So how do I use, for example, like how do I use angles and perception in wedding films, right? Because I'm a wedding filmmaker. So I use certain angles and certain uh, perspectives to tell the, a wedding film, right? So um, how do I use um, this technique? There are certain angles that I mostly use in uh different um situations and different scenes so like during like the dress up like the wedding prep like before the ceremony i use different um angles to kind of like tell the story a certain way right so in this example for this video i'll use um the ceremony for example like during the ceremony i have three main angles that i usually use in every wedding so those angles are like um so the first angle that i use mostly is the close-up shot so how does the close-up shot play a role during the ceremony how does that help me tell the story during a ceremony so the close-up helps me by kind of like getting close up to the bride or the groom and um, kind of like um taking getting those facial expressions so when I zoom in and get those facial expressions and show them in the film, it's going to kind of evoke an emotional feeling to somebody who's watching, um, you know, the film, the wedding film. They'll kind of like get emotional or they'll kind of relate to the bride and groom and how they're feeling at that point. That's why mostly like when the bride and groom are exchanging vows, I like to show the, the close up of the bride if the groom is um, talking. Oh, I like to show the uh, the facial expressions of um, the groom when the bride is um, saying her vows or, you know, being emotional. So that way I can kind of like bring you into the film and make you feel how the couple is feeling and how the viewers of the wedding, the guests are feeling by me bringing you close up into how these two characters um, are feeling and how they're kind of connecting to each other so the close-up is very important to me during wedding ceremonies because it for helps me kind of like show the facial expressions <laughs> of my characters right and so um another angle that i use a lot is the um mid shot so why do i use the mid shot um during weddings uh, during wedding ceremonies so i use the mid shot mainly to um, show what the bride and groom are doing. If there's any action going on, there's no point of me using a close-up if they're exchanging rings. I mean, I would want to show the reaction, but mainly the viewers of the film, they want to see what, you know, the bride and groom are doing. So a mid shot is good to kind of like, you know, show the action taking place, if they're holding hands, if, you know, they're reading vows, stuff like that, or whatever else they're doing. 
in this case i can also use like a full shot you know like a head to toe shot where like in some cases like um i've done a few jewish weddings where um the guy breaks the glass and sometimes it's not, it's not it's not jewish i've seen other people do this but they break the glass and you know mazel tov and stuff like that so a full shot is kind of comes in handy in that you don't want to have a close-up during a dude breaking the glass you know the bottle of wine or whatever you have to show the action taking place i mean you could do a close-up of the leg and the glass being broken but what's the point you know you want the whole action so um so it depends so the shots the angles you use um are very important right so that's how i use uh the meat shot so the other angle that i use the most the third angle is the ultra wide angle so the ultra wide angle shot i use it to kind of like um show a spectator's point of view so as a spectator is like i'm like in the crowds like a guest Sometimes I might go in this corner and show the whole, a white, uh, a wide angle of the whole thing, and just like different angles, just from different um, point of views, and just show a wide angle of the situation. So, from kind of like, um, um, you know, like a narrator's point of view. I don't know, something like that. But you get what I mean, like a spectator's point of view, right? Like you outside looking in, and sometimes you can be like part of the guest like a, a guest from the side like looking in so all those are like a kind of like ultra wide angle shots so just like wide angle shots right so that's mainly what i use for weddings so all those different angles tell the story differently they show the film differently right so that's the you know um you want to control the film by every angle you use um you know controls how you move forward with your film so that's how i use these angles in um in my weddings so in conclusion if the audience don't interpret the scene or the film as a whole how you want them to interpret it then as a filmmaker you my friend you have failed but of course it depends on your genre maybe the genre that you're doing um you want you want them to kind of be confused at the end or every scene is kind of like you know is is kind of going this way that way kind of like memento if you've watched the movie memento you know the filmmaker tells a story in a way that is confusing but at the end of the movie you kind of get it right so it depends on how you choose to tell your film but um yeah so that's it with um you know angles and perceptions and the angles you choose for every scene you know determine how you want the audience to kind of like perceive the action taking place so be very careful in the angles that you choose when you're telling a story when you're filming something because that will kind of determine how your viewers perceive the action the film the scene taking place so that's it for today's video guys i hope you enjoyed i hope you learned something so make sure you subscribe to the channel wedding videography tips and that's just how it is catch kissing